In this module of our labor economics course, we'll continue to discuss why different workers receive different wages. And in this module, we're discussing specifically pay and productivity. As we have this conversation, we'll look at the firm's wage decision. We'll look at various forms of compensation agreements. We'll consider the effects of when marginal revenue product of labor does not equal the wage. We'll look at the organization of labor, and we'll take a look at why, diff why large firms tend to pay more than smaller firms and executive compensation. First, let's consider the firm's wage decision. The firm's wage decision all centers around this concept of marginal revenue product of labor being equal to the wage. And we've seen this. We know if we look at a model where in a competitive market we have some labor demand, but we also know that the labor demand is going to equal the marginal revenue product of labor. We've seen this several times, but let me just make sure that we're clear on it. If I have a labor demand equation of 10 minus 2w, and in recogni recognition of the fact that I'm seeking a position where marginal revenue product of labor equals wage, then I can replace W with MRP of L, and I can say that this would lead me to a relation of labor demand equals 10 minus 2 MRP of L, marginal revenue product of labor, or 2 MRP of L equals 10 minus labor demand. That's the same equation, just written differently. I'll divide both sides by 2 so I can isolate marginal revenue product of labor by itself. And I'll end up with an equation that is marginal revenue product of labor equals 5 minus labor divided by 2. That would be in MRP of L and labor space the same line that I have in wage and labor space. So it's the same relationship. So as I continue to think about when marginal revenue product of labor does equal 0, if, if my MRP of L is really also equal to my labor demand, then all I need to do is identify where my labor supply relation comes across, and then that gives me some wage that is being paid, W star, and some number of labor units. But in this case, if this is measuring wage and MRP of L, on the y-axis, and if I know that at this point of W star, I'm also at a marginal revenue product of labor for these employees, I've met my condition. Marginal revenue product of labor equals wage. Same thing as wage equals marginal revenue product of labor. So I, I've met my condition. However, we also know that uh, things aren't always this simple. We also know that we have, at times, a model in which we don't expressly see labor demand. We're just seeing some formation of marginal revenue product of labor. And that suggests that sometimes it maybe it's not the same thing as labor demand. Sometimes in an imperfect market, maybe there's some monopsony or mobility costs or some other market friction taking place. We know that marginal revenue product of labor may not be the same as labor demand. And we also know that labor supply and marginal expense of labor might be different. We've already seen this in our monopsony model. Maybe we'll have marginal expense of labor come through this axis or come through as such. It'll be above labor supply such that we're going to hire a number of workers based on that relation. We only need to pay them at W prime, but our marginal revenue product is going to equal our marginal expense of labor at a much higher level. And we know we're only going to pay them W prime because at this number of workers, L prime, when that interacts with the labor supply curve, that's all we need to pay them. We could pay them more. We could pay them as much as MRP of L, but in many cases, the firms will choose not to. But we'll see as we continue this discussion on the firm's wage decision that in some cases, the firm will choose to pay them more than W prime. 
and maybe all the way up to MRP of L. It's a firm decision, and the firm receives different benefits as they make this decision. Let's consider a little bit further what we're talking about when we think about marginal revenue product to labor and wage. Wage is a number of things, of course. Wage, of course, is going to equal cash income, so the gross income that comes about on our paychecks, but it's also going to equal much more. When we think about the wage, we're really thinking about total compensation. So we've got benefits, training costs, various forms of taxes, and those are obvious to us. But what's less obvious, perhaps, is that when we think of the wage, we're really thinking of the cost of labor in an environment, which is going to include some employee search costs, because it costs money for a firm to find its workers. It's going to include some cost of supervision. We might have to question, why would it include supervision? Well, supervision is part of the employment process, is part of the labor process. And in some cases, we have found that workers actually are more productive in the face of a supervisor when given the instruction or guidance of a supervisor. So that increases their productivity, but it's because of the supervisor's efforts. And so when we think about the overall wage being paid to workers, we also have to consider the fact that inside of that wage is the cost of supervision. So wage does not always mean what the employee is getting paid. Wage means what the employee gets paid, plus the benefits given to the employee, plus any other costs associated with having that employee in the workplace. And as the firm identifies these costs, accumulates these costs, that becomes part of the W where we're seeking to equal marginal revenue product of labor with this. So it's altogether likely that in most cases, when we say W is equal to marginal revenue product of labor, that it's not W as in the cash wage, but is it is the composite of all of those inputs that form the wage in this relationship.